Hey everybody, it's John here from TheGimmyAct.com. Here we are today back in the Final Fantasy X HD Remaster, continuing our Overcoming the Nemesis guide. Today we are covering the next part of the Monster Arena, which is going to be the original creations. I'm going to assume at this point you have the ultimate weapon of every single character that you are going to be using, as well as having them have as close to max stats as possible. An optional thing is to have them as close to having their ultimate armors built as well. But for this first fight, you want to make sure you have a team with everyone who has death proof armor so make sure you put death proof on everyone and then start the first fight this one is going to be against earth eater so earth eater is actually a pretty straightforward fight especially if you have really good stats for this first phase of the fight you want to make sure you cast haste on everyone he's pretty slow and it's going to take a while for him to get to his first attack so you can take this time to spec yourself out second step is to put shell on everyone that's going to be very important especially once we start the second phase of the fight an option is to put protect on everyone as well that will help you out during the first phase of the fight but since the first phase is so short i actually recommend skipping it and just loading everyone up with shell so what you want to do next is once you put shell on everyone and everyone has haste and all that stuff you want to get to attacking so just use our classic quick hit the pinata strategy use quick hit to get a quick hit out on him every time you land a physical attack he is going to counter with a punch the punch is going to do a ton of physical damage it's also going to inflict death on whoever doesn't have a death-proof armor, which is the reason why we spec'd out everyone before the fight. Once you can land two hits on him at the full damage limit, he should be put on his back. At this point, his counterattack is going to be a reflected flare, which is the reason we took the time to put shell on everyone. That way, spells don't do too much damage. So once you get to this stage of the fight, it's going to be pretty much the same strategy of quick hit pinata hang him until he dies. Now, since Flare is only going to hit one person at a time, you can pretty much just keep up this strategy. Since Quick Hit has such little delay, you can get in a ton of damage before he even gets to his turn, which he will usually use to just get back up and you just restart the physical stage of the fight. So if one of your characters ever lands in the yellow, just make sure you use a turn to heal them. There's not too much of a setback since he's not going to counter you taking a turn to heal. He's only going to counter any attacks done to him. So basically what you want to do is you want to keep up this strategy. Use your overdrives if you want to they're going to, to do a ton of damage keep in mind this is one of the few bosses you can't use your armor breaks on so he is going to be completely immune even if you use a frag grenade or banishing blade so with that in mind might as well just hit him and hit him hard and hit him fast and you should be able to take him out in no time also this is going to be a boss that you are going to fight quite often especially if you want to grind out fortune spheres if you want to max out your luck stats for the dark aeon fights so keep that in mind get used to fighting this fight over and over all right, boss fight number two is going to be against the Greater Sphere. This guy is pretty tough, so get ready for quite the fight. Once you start the fight, we are going to use our classic team, Titus Waka Riku, and we're going to stick to using the ultimate weapons and ultimate armors if you have them. So first step of the fight is to spec out everyone. Make sure you haste protect and shell everyone shell is very important for this stage of the fight the reason for that is every time you land an attack on this thing it will counter attack with ultima so make sure you buff out any of its magic offense as quickly as possible having the auto protect and the auto haste from your ultimate armors is going to help save you time since you don't have to take those six turns in order to buff up your party so that's always a good time saver once you are able to get those three conditions on everyone it's time to start quick hit pinata in it so once again it's going to counter attack everything with ultima which will mess you up especially if your magic defense is super low and you don't have shell as you can see with full magic defense and shell it's barely going to scratch you when it comes to actually damaging this thing, your best means of attack is to use your quick hit pinata strategy. If you do go the route of overdrives, be very careful. It will always counter your overdrives with its normal attack, which is going to be the hydraulic press. Hydraulic press, if you don't have protect on, will always damage 93% of your character's total health. So that means if you have anything pretty much below full health, this thing will kill you if you don't have protect on. Protect will usually soften it to about 50%, and after it hits a hydraulic press, make sure you take the time to heal everyone. It will also generally use hydraulic press if it gets a turn, so make sure that you keep an eye on the turn rotation. You don't want this thing countering with either a really strong ultima or a hydraulic press. So with that in mind, make sure everyone is at 
full health or if not close to full health at all times so if you go the overdrive route you want to be very careful on your timing with that overdrives are also going to cause a significant amount of delay so basically you want to use them as far away from its turn as possible so generally at the start of your character's turn rotation or very 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 close to the middle other than that just make sure you keep an eye on your health bar make sure you don't get into the yellow especially when it's about to throw its own move because a hydraulic press will turn the tide of the fight into a game over so with that in mind make sure you just keep quick hit pinotting it especially if you're new to this however if you can get used to the game's battle system and timing you can throw in overdrives to save yourself a bunch of time but once again that hydraulic press will mess you up if you don't have protect on everyone so whatever strategy you decide to employ this is going to be another fight that i highly recommend you get used to the reason for that is you are going to have to beat him in order to grind out luck spheres if you want to get your luck stats up for the dark aeon fights all right boss fight number three against catastrophe he's actually quite easy especially if you have really good stats because he has pretty little health and the strategy to beat him is pretty straightforward if you are worried i recommend having ribbon armor if that is too much of a grind for you make sure you use your anti marlboro armor most notably having confuse and poison proof is going to help out so first stage of the fight he's going to be in his shell quick hit pinata him until he opens up which shouldn't be too too long maybe two or three turn rotations doing max damage at every step of the way and make sure you do this with all three characters once again having auto haste and auto protect is going to save you a lot of time since you don't have to take that time in order to manually cast it on everyone since doing that you can only do one character at a time all right once you get him to open up it is time to unleash all of your overdrives on him so he's going to be pretty vulnerable to overdrives especially after he gets out of his shell so make sure you start throwing those overdrives and we're just going to smack him with our non-overdrive user which is riku in this case and titus and waka are just going to butcher him using our overdrives with max stats we should do a ton of damage and we should have the turn rotation in our favor so as you can see He's going to be completely damage vulnerable to overdrives, unlike the other two bosses. So overdrives are definitely going to be the way to go. At max stats, you can shred this guy's health bar in only a few turns. All right, next fight against Thuban. This is either going to be really hard or really easy, depending how close you are to completing those ultimate armors. And I'll explain more once we get into the fight. So start the fight, and we're just going to stick with unleashing our overdrives right from the start. So once you get out of the gates, just start hitting your overdrives as soon as possible. Attack with Waka and Blitz Ace with Titus and that should do a ton of damage off the gate. This is a boss that is not going to be immune to our heavy damage because of ridiculous armor conditions so we are able to land a ton of damage right from the beginning. Now, whenever you attack him, he's going to a counterattack with this move called Condemn. It's going to be a Tail Swipe. It's not going to do too much damage, so you're probably wondering what it does. What it's going to do is it removes all of your buffs. So anything positive, Auto Life, Protect, Shell, Reflect, etc. But the cool thing about having the Ultimate Armors is any Auto abilities, like Auto Haste, Auto Protect auto whatever they are going to be immune to condemn so they will never be able to be debuffed by one of these attacks so if you get hit by condemn you pretty much keep all of your auto conditions including haste and protect which is going to be part of the ultimate armor so once again this fight is super easy since his main gimmick is pretty much deflated by having the ultimate armors equipped now, once you exhaust your overdrives, it's time to switch back to our good old quick hit pinata strategy. Once again, it's going to counterattack with condemn every time, but having auto protect on will pretty much reduce the damage to hardly anything. If it does manage to get a turn, it will usually use its version of photon spray, which puts some nasty status conditions on us. So make sure you try to be quick and kill it. If you are absolutely impatient, what you can do is you can have a bunch of characters in your back lot, and you can have them use entrust to fill Titus and Waka's overdrive bars up, and then keep getting overdrives off until this thing dies however quick hit strategy is also a very viable strategy since this thing is slow and is going to take a while to get its turn especially if we have haste and quick hit going on at the same time we should be able to chip him out before he gets a move in if he does get a move in keep in mind his scratch isn't going to do too much damage since once again we have protect on if anything heal your characters before he gets a move in if he hits you with the photon spray having at least one character have ribbon will allow you to be able to heal the rest of your characters other than that, this is going to be one of the more easy fights in the rotation. Alright, on to Nestlug. This is quite possibly one of the more annoying enemies in the game, up there with Dark slash Jumbo Flan, whatever his name was. 
However, there is a little trick in order to make this a lot easier. So obviously go into this with max stats. You also want to have max stats on Yuna because we are going to have to summon in order to get this trick off. Start the fight off by using our quick hit pinata strategy. Don't worry about overdrives quite just yet. We are going to just try to damage this guy until he gets to his turn rotation. So just make sure you keep using quick hit. Try to land as much damage as you can before he gets his turn. But keep an eye on that turn rotation. Basically, before the turn he gets his attack, you want to make sure you swap out one of your peeps for Yuna. All right, once you switch on over to Yuna, what you want to do is you either want to use Grand Summon or you want to summon an Aeon that has full overdrive. So in this case, highly recommend either Anima or the Mega Sisters, the only two Aeons with an overdrive that could break the damage limit. So the reason for that is if you manage to do enough damage to Nest Slug while he's in his first form, you can actually skip his second form where he retreats in his shell. Basically, your goal is to try to break his shell before he can go back into it. So the only way to do that is to break the damage limit. So once again, that is achieved thanks to Anima or the Mega Sisters. So use Grand Summon and get an Oblivion or a Delta attack off, and that should do enough damage where you can break this guy's shell. That way he never retreats into it and he never has that obnoxious face phase where he hits himself with regen and cure every turn which is once again super super annoying so now that we are in the last phase of the fight we are going to get the most out of our aeon while we still have it here so make sure you try to damage this thing it will mess you up because after using an overdrive it's going to have several turns thanks to that delay it's probably going to hit you with megaton which will knock out your aeon in one hit sadly but once the aeon goes down we're going to get our homies back out and we're just going to go back to quick hit pinata hang him until he dies so thankfully by now he isn't able to heal himself so we should have no trouble smacking him until he goes down make sure you use your overdrives now if you have them so titus and waka blitz ace and attack reels and this fight should be over in no time Next up to bat is going to be the Ultima Buster. So get started on this. You definitely need your standard team, Titus, Waka, Riku, for this because Waka is going to be one of the few guys who can actually damage this thing's head. So first step I like to do, take out the head. Quick hit the head. It should go down in one hit. Then quick hit the arms so it doesn't protect itself. So make sure you use the other two characters. Take out the arms. Once again, they go down in one hit. The arms and the head will have 80,000 health each so they should be able to be taken out if you are hitting the upper thresholds of the damage limit once you take those out there's no real strategy to him just keep attacking the body just quick hit pinata him he has no armor so just make sure you keep doing this throw your overdrives if you want to He's not going to have any counterattack, so there's no real penalty for using an overdrive or even quick hit pinata hang him. And he's also rather slow once all of his additional body parts are taken out. So just make sure you keep throwing attacks at him, and eventually he should get whittled down. He does have quite a bit of health. He has, I think, 5 million HP, so this fight's going to take rather long compared to the rest, even with max stats. However, he isn't too, too tough to deal with. Once you take out all of the body parts, pretty much the only thing he's able to do is to cast Ultima, which can be softened by casting Shell on everyone, so that's not too too bad. His parts will regenerate over time, but once again, there's nothing stopping you from retaking them out, so you always have that to look forward to. As long as everyone has auto haste, you should be good in terms of agility. Just once again, make sure you keep using quick hit, use your overdrives when you get them, and this fight is actually a cinch. It's just very long because of his massive HP. Alright, last one before the big guy, Shinryu. This one you have to use Titus, Waka, and Riku because it is an underwater fight. Keep that in mind, this guy has really low health, so your goal is to try to do this as quick as possible, especially before he gets a turn since he has one of the unavoidable killing moves in the game, which is going to be Eraser, which is going to petrify one of your people. Remember, if you get petrified underwater, it's an auto death that you can't even fix with stone proof or ribbons. That being said, once the fight starts, start going to your high spots right away. Use both of your over overdrives, attack reels with Waka, blitz ace with Titus. If you get to Riku's turn, entrust your overdrive bar to one of them and then have them hit a third overdrive and you should get a massive chunk of the work out of the way. Once you get back to normal attacking spots, make sure you start quick hit pinyotting him and you should be able to get this done. If he does manage to land an attack, hopefully that his erase ability is going to hit someone that you don't mind losing. So in that case, it's going to be Riku since she doesn't have any offensive overdrives we can use to try to make this as smooth as possible. 
So at max stats, three overdrives and a few quick hits should be able to take him out before he can get his first eraser off. So that is always good to keep in mind. So definitely go into this with as close to max stats as possible. Once we beat him, we should unlock the last guy in the monster arena, which is going to be Nemesis. And of course, I will be showing you how to beat him in a separate part. He's quite the doozy of the fight. So make sure you check back soon for that video, and that's all there is to it.